No appearance in Mort, sadly. Um, but I'll do it from a Mort has arrived in Death's house at this point. Um, Death's garden was big, neat, and well tended. It was also very, very black. The grass was black, the flowers were black. Black apples gleamed among the black leaves of a black apple tree. Even the air looked inky. After a while, Mort thought he could see, no, he couldn't possibly imagine he could see, different colours of black. That's to say, not simply very dark tones of red and green and whatever, but real shades of black. A whole spectrum of colours, all different and all, well, black. <laughs> he tipped out the last note of horse manure, as you all know from the quiz, <laughs> put the barrow away and went back to the house. Enter. Death was standing behind a lectern, poring over a map. He looked at Mort as if he wasn't entirely there. You haven't heard of the Bay of Manta, have you? He said. No, sir, said Mort. Famous shipwreck there. Was there? There will be, said Death, if I can find the damn place. <laughs> Mort walked around the lectern and peered at the map. You're going to sink the ship, he said. Death looked horrified. Certainly not. There will be a combination of bad seamanship, shallow water, and a contrary wind. That's horrible, said Mort. Will there be many drowned? That's up to fate, said Death, turning to the bookcase behind him and pulling out a heavy gazetteer. There's nothing I can do about it. What is that smell? <laughs> Uh, me, said <laughs> Ah, the stables. Death paused, his hand on the spine of the book. And why do you think I directed you to the stables? Think carefully now. Mort hesitated. He had been thinking carefully, in between counting wheelbarrows. He'd wondered if it had been to coordinate his hand and eye, or, or teach him the habit of obedience or bring home to him the importance on the human scale of small tasks, or make him realize that even great men must start at the bottom. None of these explanations seemed exactly right. I think, he began, yes. <laughs> well, I think it was because you were up to your knees in horse shit, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Death looked at him for a long time. Mort shifted uneasily from one foot to the other. Absolutely correct, snapped Death. Clarity of thought, realistic approach, very important in a job like ours. Yes, sir. Sir? Mm. Death was struggling with the index. People <laughs> die all the time, sir, don't they? Millions, you must be very busy, but... Death gave Mort the look he was coming to be familiar with. It started off as a as blank surprise, flickered briefly towards annoyance, called in for a drink at recognition, <laughs> and finally settled on vague forbearance. <laughs> but I'd have thought you'd have been, well, out and about a bit more. You know, stalking the streets. My granny's almanac's got a picture of you with a scythe and stuff. <laughs> I see. I'm afraid it's hard to explain unless you know about point incarnation and node focusing. I don't expect you do. I don't think so. Generally, I'm only expected to make an actual appearance on special occasions. Like a king, I suppose, Mort said. I mean, a king is reigning even when he's doing something else, or asleep, even. Is that it, sir? It'll do, said Death, <laughs> rolling up the maps. And now, boy, if you finish the stable, you can go and see if Albert has any jobs he wants doing. If you like, you can come out with me on the round this evening. Mort nodded. Death went back to his big leather book, took up a pen, stared at it for a moment, and then looked up at Mort with his skull on one side. Have you met my daughter? He said. Uh, yes, sir, said Mort, his hand on the doorknob. She is a very pleasant girl, said Death. But I think she quite likes having someone of her own age around to talk to. Sir? And of course, one day all this will belong to her. Something like a small blue supernova flared for a moment in the depths of his eye sockets. 
It dawned on Mort that with some embarrassment and complete lack of expertise, <laughs> death was trying to wink. <laughs> <laughs> And then Mort decides he would have to be doing a day off. And finally, he plucked up his coat. Different moment, not the same scene. <laughs> oh, what? said Death in astonishment, sitting behind his ornate desk and turning his scythe shaped paper knife over and over in his hands. <laughs> An afternoon off, repeated Mort. The room suddenly seemed to be oppressively big, with himself very exposed in the middle of a carpet about the size of a field. But why? said Death. It can't be to attend your grandmother's funeral, he added. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> I just want to, you know, get out and meet people, said Mort, trying to outstare that unflinching blue glaze. gaze. But you meet people every day, protested Death. Y yes, I know, only, well, not for very long. <laughs> I mean, it'd be nice to meet someone with a life expectancy of more than a few minutes. <laughs> Sir, he added. Death drummed his fingers on the desk, making a sound not unlike a mouse tap dancing, and gave Mort another few seconds of stare. He noticed that the boy seemed rather less elbows than he remembered, stood a little more upright, and bluntly could use a word like expectancy. It was all that library. All right, he said grudgingly. But it seems to me you have everything you need right here. The duty is not onerous, is it? No, sir. And you have good food and a warm bed and recreation and people your own age. <laughs> Pardon, sir? My daughter, said Death. You have met her, I believe. Oh, yes, sir. She has a very warm personality when you get to know her. <laughs> I'm sure she has, sir. Nevertheless, you wish. Death launched the words with a spin of distaste. An afternoon off. Yes, sir, if you please, sir. Very well, so be it. You may have until sunset. Death opened his great ledger, picked up a pen, and began to write. Occasionally, he'd reach out and flick the beads of an abacus. After a minute, he looked up. You're still here, he said. And in your own time, too. <laughs> he began in sourly. Uh, said Mort. Will people be able to see me, sir? I imagine so, I'm sure, said Death. Is there anything else I might be able to assist you with before you leave for this debauch? <laughs> <laughs> well, there is one thing. I don't know how to get to the mortal world, sir, said Mort desperately. Death sighed loudly. Just walk there. <laughs> yeah, death and cut well.